What if Beetlejuice exploded? Suddenly, shadows appear on the ground. Not from the moon, but from a star. A flash outshines every planet, every star. A new light so bright, it casts shadows at night. No warning, no sound, just brilliance. That star, it's Beetlejuice. A red supergiant over 600 light years away. If it exploded back then, its light would be reaching us tonight. We'd see a stellar death, centuries after it happened, brighter than the full moon, visible even during the day, and it would stay blazing for weeks. A supernova lighting up our skies. But that much energy doesn't just pass by. What happens when all that power finally reaches Earth? Would Earth be in danger from Betelgeuse? A star explodes with the energy of 100 billion suns. So what happens when that energy travels 600 light years to us? The radiation would strike our satellites, shake our magnetic field, stir the upper atmosphere, and then nothing more. But is that really the end of it? Gamma ray bursts? Ozone collapse? Mass extinction? Not from this star. That kind of danger needs to be much closer, within 50 light years. Betelgeuse is more than 12 times farther. So no, Earth wouldn't burn. We'd be amazed, but unharmed. But stars don't just disappear. When one dies, something always remains. And what's left behind might be even stranger than the explosion itself. What if Betelgeuse's corpse began to pulse? Could Betelgeuse become a pulsar? The outer layers explode outward, but deep inside, the core collapses inward, crushed into a single atomic mass. So dense, it becomes a neutron star, and if it spins fast enough, it pulses, beaming radiation into space like a lighthouse in the dark. A pulsar. Some spin hundreds of times per second, blasting up focused, invisible beams of energy. Most of them miss us, but the rare ones that don't are unmistakable. If Betelgeuse became one of those, we might hear it before we ever see it. A ticking star, a cosmic heartbeat. But what if it didn't stop at a heartbeat? What if it collapsed even further? What if Betelgeuse collapsed into a black hole? No light, no sound, no trace. The star vanishes and what's left behind isn't a memory. It's a mouth, a mouth with no bottom, a black hole. From here on Earth, we wouldn't feel a thing. Its gravity stays the same, its mass unchanged. From afar, it behaves like the star it used to be. But black holes don't always stay quiet. If it feeds on gas, dust, even nearby stars, it grows. It stretches, and its influence expands. You wouldn't see it. You wouldn't hear it. But gravity doesn't ask for permission. Unless there's already something like it much, much closer. Could there be black holes closer to Earth? Betelgeuse is far. But what if something like it is already here? Black holes don't shine. They don't flash. They bend. Some nearby stars wobble. Not from what we see, but from what we don't. Astronomers found stars orbiting invisible companions. One was discovered just 80 light years away. No explosion, no warning, only motion and math. We didn't detect the black hole. We detected its effects. But how many more are out there hiding in plain sight? What if the next cosmic flash doesn't come from far away, but from the darkness already watching us? How will we know before it's too late? The universe speaks softly not in words, but in forces. We don't need to see an object to know it's there. A star wobbles. A beam of light bends ever so slightly, and the fabric of space curves around something invisible. We detect mass by its pull. We see black holes by what they move. That's how we know, not from the light they give, but from the light they bend. Not from what we see, but from what refuses to be hidden. These are the fingerprints of the cosmos and we've been reading them for decades. Because even the darkest objects still leave a mark on everything around them. Like and subscribe for more videos like this.